Mary, how does the little man man, 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 the fall? We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. It's fight or flight Friday. Hey, bitch, we control your bodies. Guess what? Guys win again, okay? Men win again. And yes, we control your bodies. Hi, I'm your Republican congressman. <laughs> Hi, I'm your Republican congressman. It's your body, my choice. <laughs> and men, women again, men win again. There will never, ever, be a female president never there will never be a female president ever it's over glass ceiling dude it's a ceiling made of f***ing bricks you will never break it your stupid face keeps hitting the brick ceiling we will keep you down forever you will never control your own bodies you will never be the president of the global empire Never going to happen, sweetie. Your body, our choice. Oh, good luck getting laid there. I, I, this incel says what? Uh, see, now you understand a little bit. Just, I hope I got your attention by playing that first out of the gate because you need to pay attention. You do. You need to pay attention to the online ecosystem, okay? All of this blame game, listen, don't play the blame game. MAGA will do it for us for the next four years. Don't be playing the blame game. They'll beat you over the head for the next four years telling you how you suck. You don't need to tell anybody in the Democratic, uh, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem, the Democratic America, the Democratic world, uh, to blame anybody for it because they'll do it. They're, they're on it, okay? And they're going to be surrounded by, I mean, look at Donald Trump picked his chief of staff. Do you know who he picked? A woman with zero experience being chief of anything. Zero experience in government. Zero experience running a White House. What could go wrong? She is, just in, in case you forgot who Susie Wiles is, you remember that, um, that little get-together they had at Magaloco to look at the uh, Iranian war plans that he stole? Uh, it was part of the documents that, uh, you know, was an actual case against him, which will now go away. You understand he ran... He ran to stay out of jail. Okay. So the January 6th case that was supposed to come to fruition in Judge Chutkin's uh, courtroom, you could kiss that goodbye. But anyway, when he first got those documents and uh, he decided to share them as proof of his manhood, Susie Wiles was who he showed, and others at Magaloco was who he showed these documents to going, hey, look, and it was that recording, that recording that actually created the case. And now she's the chief of staff. Blackmail anybody? Anybody? Like, uh, I, I don't know. So this whole administration is going to be a whole bunch of uh, uh, cartoon characters. It's going to be, you know, somebody said, I wish I would have thought this up, but I didn't. Somebody said it's like Gotham. It's like all of the Batman villains got uh, positions in City Hall in Gotham, like the Penguin did and uh, uh, the Joker did. You know, all of them are, are now moving into City Hall. That's what's going on here. You're going to have toadies, fabulists, blackmailers, lowlifes, uh, fantasists, conspiracy uh, theorists. You're going to have misogynists and racists. You're going to have election deniers. That is what's going to be the White House. That's what's going to be the administration of these here United States of America. I, I don't want to hear you blaming uh, Kamala Harris. Really, I'm so sorry. She ran the best freaking campaign in 107 days that she had. She raised more money in, in, in 107 days, a billion dollars, this woman, you're telling me they were enthusiastic about her? That's a lie. That's a stinking, unbelievable, uh, right-wing ecosystem online lie. This woman made, like, lunch meat out of Donald Trump at the one debate he showed up for. And then he wouldn't debate her ever again because she was, he had met not just his match. It was a game, set, match. The thing was freaking over. She made mincemeat out of him. She showed him to be the idiot that he is. What actually occurred here 
is the online ecosystem, which, you know, listen, uh, 20 years ago, there really wasn't so much of an online ecosystem. No, no. You know what there was? There was a thousand hours of conservative media broadcasters to my one hour. And I know this because a study was actually done and I introduced it as evidence in Congress. 20 years ago, I told the Democratic Party, you have no idea what's going on in media. You have no earthly idea, and the Democrats are not doing jack crap about it. They are ignoring the media landscape. They're ignoring the ecosystem that's out there. They're ignoring Rush Limbaugh. They're ignoring Sean Hannity. They're ignoring Fox News. They're ignoring disinformation and misinformation. They're letting it slide. They're letting it go. And the people that are programming it are doing only one thing. Only one thing, they're buying shows that are like mine and putting them on a shelf so that when you come to them, when you come to them, you're like on 65 radio stations. By the time they're done with you, you're on 11. Yeah, they shelve you. That's what was going on. And nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants. Now you have all these freaking right wing, uh, you know, you had bots and you had lunatic fringy people. And when they got deplatformed for their racist rants, for their, I mean, uh, you know, like, um, you know, Nick Fuentes is trying to say, that's who that was. Nick Fuentes is trying to say, oh, he was trolling women. <laughs> I guess that's his hobby. I don't know. And that he wasn't really serious about I control you. But let me tell you two things about that. One, that's bull crap. Of course he's serious. He's been talking about, you know, taking us back to uh, the Middle Ages forever, that he wants to marry a, a 16-year-old. I mean, he's been saying uh, forever, forever, what it's going to look like when they're back in charge. And, uh, you know, he's a white supremacist. And he's actually, uh, you know, been saying this for years. When, when guys like that get deplatformed, okay, or guys like uh, uh, Donald Trump got deplatformed for their horrendous, misogynist, racist, disinformation, misinformation campaign during COVID, right? What happened? A billionaire, Elon Musk, swept in, swept in. And so did Peter Thiel. And they start, first of all, Peter Thiel came first, okay? Not only did he pour like millions of dollars into a candidate named J.D. Vance and put him on the fast track to uh, be the vice president of the United States, but he also invented Rumble, Rumble, which is where Steve Bannon and a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what to call them. They're, they're white supremacists. They're, they're white supremacists. They're, 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 they're Christian nationalist white supremacists. So that's Nazi. That's fascist, right? And they make no bones about it. When they got deplatformed, Peter Thiel uh, went in there and, and bankrolled a whole new platform for them. I, I say something that uh, the Democratic Party doesn't like, and you're gone. You're banished to the hinterlands. Okay? That's what happens. And then you have to go to work for the dark star. You have to actually go to work for, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the Jewish la uh, space laser people. And, and guess what happens? They buy your show, and then they put you on a shelf. That's what happened to our attempt at having a media system. At, at, okay? And the billionaires of this world, they like the right-wing lunacy. They like the racism. They like the misogyny. They don't like Democrats. Why? Why don't they like even independents like me? Because we're talking about their fairness. We're talking about fair taxation and wealth inequality and, you know, how people are getting very frustrated out here and it's starting to get really ugly. They don't want to hear that, okay? They don't want to hear that. They want to bankroll people like Nick Fuente. Remember, we just, we just found out how, ma how many millions of dollars were going into bankrolling a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, uh, white supremacists, a whole bunch of these. And, and the money was coming from Russia. And they put millions of dollars into those shows, millions of dollars into those shows. And we're sitting here talking about a war that's not ours out of context and blaming Joe Biden for what the right wing fringe in Israel is doing. I mean, it just it takes your breath away. Truly, it really does. But that's that's our mistake. That's our mistake. You want you want to you want to understand what's going on? People started accounts like uh, Libs of TikTok where they invented things. They took every single strange video put out by some young person with a, you know, a nose ring and turned them into the enemy. And people bought it. They literally bought it. Clear. 
things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Here's how we got beat. We got beat because the Republicans and the conservatives built a different media system. Hello. That had to do with online, had to do with podcasts, had to do with, with streaming platforms, and they were spending their money there. We were laughing at them. And knocking on doors in Philadelphia and Detroit, it's like, there's no Trump people. They're not dropping literature. They're not dropping, dropping on, knocking on doors. Ha, well, in ha, fact, ha. It, was, it was laughing, like, oh, Elon Musk and Charlie Kirk, yeah. but their PACs we don't were, know what they're doing. We, they're were, making, that we the... were making fun of Donald Trump for having thrown away his ground game and doing some weird stuff online. We thought that they were, were idiots. It turned out we were the idiots. We woke up in a body bag because while we were knocking mm -hmm. on doors, they were making these phones into... 24 hour a day political weapons for themselves. And so we got outflanked, outplayed, yeah. outbeat by people who told us the whole time that they knew what they were doing. And people are mad. And future and and and, and uh, future forward, all these different groups that vacuumed up all this money and told everybody to sit down and shut up are going to be in for an accountability session from the grassroots, and it is coming. You know, it should have come 20 years ago. And, you know, that was the first thing out of my mouth the day after the election, Wednesday. Go look at Wednesday's show. The first thing out of my mouth was this all happened on TikTok. Okay, this all happened on right-wing media. This all happened online. This all happened, in, you know, on Rumble and podcasts and Joe Rogan and all. This all happened. This all happened over a period of 20 years. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's getting so smart. Now, all of a sudden, everybody, okay, good. Good. Now, go find money to pour into a, an ecosystem that sounds like America, that looks like America, that serves America, that gives a damn about working class people, that is a middle class get together place where everybody uh, you know, feels like uh, they're hearing uh, stories about themselves. Go ahead and spend money on that. Go ahead and spend money on uh, you know, people who are entertaining who could tell that story. Go ahead and do that. They won't do that. You know what happens? Democrats, uh, Democrats, uh, you know, people who broadcast, people who broadcast from, from my side, even in the middle to the left, and, and, and to, they, they trash each other, okay? They, they, the right, guess what they do? They go on each other's podcasts. They go to the little guys. They go to the big guys. The candidates go to the little guys. The candidates go to the big guys. And somebody gets in trouble. Somebody gets, uh, you know, like uh, goes too far and says something really ugly and racist. Or somebody goes too far and says something like, that. I'm endorsing not. Nazism, which is what, uh, you know, freaking Nick Fuente says. He literally says that. He, he, he says, oh, and now they're comparing Vladimir Putin to uh, Hitler. Like, that's a bad thing. I mean, he actually, you don't believe me? He actually says crap like this, okay? And now they're going on about Russia, and Vladimir Putin is Hitler, and, and they say that's not a good thing. And they say that's not a good thing. Can we give a round of applause for Russia? Okay, that guy, okay, if, if, if somebody uh, from uh, MySpace, you know, and I don't mean the online thing, I mean from, from my point of view, actually said something like that, okay, uh, there would be a sit down, there would be a, a suspension, maybe even, because I used to talk about things that were comparable to, uh, you know, Hitler's agenda, and they were having none of it, okay? My old bosses, uh, none of it. No, don't you dare. You can't say that. You can't compare a person who's trying to take all the power and, and called it a unitary executive and compare them to strong men. Can't do it. Can't have it. You're out of here. Do you know what I'm saying? They're on their side of the aisle. You say stuff like that, you're elevated to, uh, you know, a, 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 a millions of dollars come pouring into your coffers. We're sitting here crowdfunding, okay? That's what happens on my... And people want to sit there now and they want to blame this one and she didn't and, she, and he didn't. Bull crap, the misogyny, the racism, the ugliness that is just beaming onto phones of 18... You want to know what 18-year-olds... You want to see the tame stuff? Okay, he, he's an extremist, obviously, got millions of dollars, uh, millions of dollars, was invited to every political action committee meeting, was invited to speak at, uh, you know, every convention. That's what they do with theirs. That's what they do with their miscreants, with their people who say they want to marry 16-year-olds. They elevate them to sainthood status. Why? Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Because they know men, young boys, men, they like that crap. They like the sexist, misogynistic talk shows. They always have, 
they always will. And making enemies out of just, you know, plain misogyny like uh, Joe Rogan's misogyny or, you know, people that just sit there and get uh, high all day and, and interview people and never put that, – that is a huge mistake. It's a huge mistake. And everybody's going to tell us how we have to go dig deep and, and find the answers and do the hard work. No, put money into it. Put money into it. Get social media, you know, whiz kids and, and, and let them, uh, you know, write the algorithm for us. Good God, man, this is not. Well, it is rocket science. It is. Unfortunately for us, they have a rocket scientist on their side. Who's the president of the United States now? You know that, not Trump. And you know who the vice president is? Right, it's Peter Thiel. They just literally put themselves in these awesome positions of power, and we are no longer a democracy. And you know, it's, it's an interesting spot that we're in right now. Like, I woke up this morning, and it felt okay until I remembered. Do you know what I mean? And then the anxiety just washes over you, and your stomach... And you know what time it was? It was 5.18 a.m. Guess what? I'm up! Because you can't sleep. Because I know what the hell happened, and I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen, and you know what's going to happen. And it ain't going to look anything like America, the American dream, or any of those things. Now, I'll play you the tame stuff that was, you know, uh, propelled into the minds and the eyes of uh, uh, 18 to 29-year-olds, okay? They were, they, were, they were literally making videos and telling uh, 18 to 29-year-olds, there is no hope for you. The economy's left you behind. You will never own a house. You will never prosper. You will never live the American dream. Now, these are 19-year-olds, okay? I, I just want some of us to remember, because it wasn't that long ago, when I was 19 years old, and I felt like I had no direction and no chance to go to college, nobody even mentioned college as an option for me. It wasn't even a, you know, it wasn't even a thought like, Rand, do you want to fill out an application? No, it wasn't even suggested, okay? So what do... What do you do? What do you do if you're from a middle-class family and that's the situation on the ground for you? That's right, you join the military. These kids, it's not even a possibility for them. No, they make videos now, okay? People can't afford to live, people can't afford gas, people can't afford food, people can't afford rent. This guy is 19 years old. 19 years old. Bitching who can't afford food. What do you, you look well-fed. You look, you look like you, uh, you know, don't sleep outside. The, the, the cost of living has gone up within these past four years, and I think that everyone here has been a victim of that. A victim. In the future, I victim. want to be able to own a home. And he, when he was president, the prices were a lot lower, especially for home buyers. And that is a huge issue for me. I want to be able to own my own home. I want to be able to start a family at an affordable cost. She's 18. At 18 years old, she's being told she'll never own a home. What the F are you pumping into the bloodstream of kids? Hopelessness, you'll never own a home, you'll never be able to start a family, everything's just so... Inflation is 1.9%. It's not inflation. This was not about the economy. It was about the perception of the economy. It was about scaring people, pumping out these videos. Oh, I can't afford food, I can't afford rent. You're freaking 19 years old. Go join the military. Go do something. Connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. I like the uh, no tax on tips and no tax on <laughs> overtime. Uh, I'm a big fan of lowering taxes personally, and in high school I worked jobs that I earned money through in tips. High so. That would have uh, helped, been able to help me save a lot more for college. And Get I think that would have helped me out a lot more in the long run. So I'm a big Christian, and I feel like that's the most important thing. And if the country is led towards righteousness and goodness, then we're going to be in a good place. And if it's not, which I believe that Kamala Harris would bring us all the way down and, and sink us and make us corrupt, um, we're not going to be able to get out of there. That, that's, that, that, that's, that's what they saw. That's what our kids saw on an endless loop. And that's the, you know, that's, that's the vanilla version of it. Really. See, that, la that last girl, that really um, amplifies your theory on the social media because uh, there is no reason for her to come to that conclusion by Kamala's 
track record or what she said or what she's done. There's only one one place she could have heard that because it's absolutely not true. Well, I, and and what she's saying is that she would rather have a guy who's been adjudicated and a, a, a rapist, a guy who has been found guilty of 34 felonies, is more Christian than Kamala Harris, who literally goes to church every Sunday, every Sunday, and has done absolutely everything in an honest, straightforward, decent a kind manner has proposed things like elder care, pre-K, universal pre-K, uh, 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 the, 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 uh, investing in Head Start. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, of course, of course, it's brainwashing. It's propaganda, and it's happening. And you, we saw, I saw it coming 20 years ago. I saw it coming a long-ass time ago when they had the same guy on multiple radio stations in a tiny little town. Do you know what I mean? Like it could have been, um, it could have been Erie, Pennsylvania, right? And on uh, on four radio stations at ten o'clock in the morning, you would have the same show, right? And it would be like ten to two would be Rush Limbaugh, and then two to two to four it would be uh, you know, or two to six would be Sean Hannity on multiple radio stations, and nobody thought that was odd. No one thought that was strange. No one thought that would crowd out conversation or ideas or diverse I mean, you know it's like so amazing and 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 what did social media do they went out and they found kids literally children kids who you know uh, were dancing in their rooms or were putting lipstick on and or were kissing each other like girls do when we're young we you know we kiss our hands first to practice making out and then we kiss each other to practice making out and they put that uh, 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 as as like the libs of TikTok, okay? And it became like a, a sexualization of your children. It is, oh my God, oh my God. And this is, like I said yesterday, that's the proof. You want to know? That's the proof that people cared about those videos more than they cared about climate change. And these 20-year-olds, these 19-year-olds, these 18-year-olds, they're just repeating, I'll never buy a house. I'll never have the American dream. I'll never be able to pay my rent. Things are cost too much. Things cost too much. Uh, you know, uh, uh, eggs are, they're, they're $3. I, I don't know what people's issue is with, you know, eggs anymore. But, I mean, it's just like talking like crap all the time, all the time, all the time. Over and over to each other, to each other. And then we find out Russia was pouring money into uh, these right-wing influencers. I mean, just pouring money into a Tim Pool, people that, you know, uh, people our age uh, probably don't even pay attention to, but I do. Okay, and I play their, their weird clips, and I try and show them to you so you understand what 18 or 29-year-olds are being exposed to. They're not, they're not reading papers. They're not reading the Wall Street Journal. They're not reading the, the Washington Post. They're not reading the New York Times. They're not reading the Atlantic. They're not reading uh, any of the things that you're reading. They don't read. They don't. People are actually graduating college not even able to read. Dave Rubin, you don't know who that is. Benny Johnson, you don't know who that is. Tim Poole, you don't. Nick Fuentes, you don't know who it is unless, you know, you saw, like, uh, me play him. I mean, people don't even know who Steve Bannon is, okay? They don't, but Rumble and and the war room and all of this, this, the threats that are being made against ordinary people, that's where it's coming from. And the big money from foreign, uh, uh, foreign money, foreign money, the Kremlin, seriously, there's an indictment that was filed, uh, you know, in September that, that said that a company that was linked to six conservative influencers, you know, like Donald Trump calls them. Donald Trump does Tim Pool's show. He actually sits with him, which is crazy when you think about it. But Tim Pool is, uh, you know, secretly funded by, by Russian state media employees uh, they, to churn out English language propaganda. And that's what the, how they get paid. That's exactly how they get paid. And we're sitting here going, buy a stick of podcast. You know what I'm saying? And, and it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying this as a pitch to you. I'm saying this as this is how it is. And so people who try to do what I do, they get blackballed or banned. I, I can't be on Sirius XM because a person uh, decided that uh, she didn't like my position on Hillary Clinton. And so for all the past, what, 10 years, I'm not allowed on there. And my time slot was given away to a guy who is so freaking boring, it, it, it could curdle milk. Sorry.
it's just the truth. These are some boring broadcasters. They're not entertaining. They're not fun. They could, couldn't make a joke if their lives depended on it, okay? They couldn't see the, the joy in life if they had to. You know, I mean, they couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't tell the story of going to a doctor and finding out no one's voting. What? What is this? And then finding out twenty million people didn't vote. They can't be, get clued in to what's real, you know, because they're 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 sitting there doing the uh, corporate thing just to keep their little slot, just to keep that little gig going. It's really sad. It's pathetic, is what it is. But you piss off one Democrat who has a little bit of power, a little bit, and you will never work again. You sit there and you say Hitler's a good person. You say Hitler did some good things. You're elected president and billions of of Elon Musk's dollars come rolling into you. Peter Thiel will support uh, Steve Bannon, who threatens violence and actually produced violence against our capital. Still, millions, millions. And I tried to tell people, I tried to warn you, I tried to say, this is bad what's going on. This, this whole scenario that we're trying to make decisions. In. No one ever makes a good decision when they're angry. And the anger machine was just, it was up to 11. And you know where we are now? Brett said it to, to me just before the show. They're actually during the break. We're in the eye of a hurricane. What does that mean? Well, it sounds, you know, chaotic. And uh, no, the eye is very calm. The eye is the place where you wake up in the morning and you feel kind of good for five seconds until you realize, oh, the back end is coming. The back end is coming, right? The election was the front end of the hurricane. Now we're in this little transition period where uh, all these really, really uh, bad people are being plugged in one by one by one. Nobody wants to pay attention to that either. Nobody wants to pay attention to... And let me tell you something. Whoever is the Secretary of Defense... That's the person that's going to do it. That's the person that's going to unleash the whirlwind, okay? When the back end of the hurricane comes, you know what what comes with it? Day one of Trump. And what did he promise on day one? Mass bloody deportations. He actually used the word bloody. Mass bloody deportations. You know what you're going to do? You're going to try and protest. You know what some of the young kids are going to do? They're going to try and protest. And guess what's going to happen? That's right, the Insurrection Act. That will be invoked because America is turning into a bloodbath. And that's when we lose. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. I imagine you voted for Donald Trump. I did. Can you tell me why? I voted for him because from my perspective on the world, based on my worldview, he is someone who stands for the things that I stand for. I don't necessarily always like the way that he acts or... Um, the choices that he makes in the way that he interacts with people. But to me, there's always a lesser of two evils, and the things that he stands for are better than the things that Kamala stands for. You think Trump is a lesser of two evils? Mm -hmm. Does that feel right to you, that you have to pick between the lesser of two evils instead of somebody you can really believe in? Yeah, it does. Sometimes it's very frustrating, but sometimes you have to choose that. And to me, I'm choosing the right thing to the best of my ability right now. Yes, they took away your uh, right to, uh, you know, conduct your life the way you see fit for your life. Uh, They uh, actually are going to mass deport neighbors and friends. Uh, They are going to put a 60% tax on, a tariff on that uh, Chinese sweater that you're wearing that you probably bought from Xi'an or Timu, okay? Uh, And you chose the lesser of two evils. Hey, bitch, we control your bodies. Yeah, that was the lesser of two evils. I'm sure she made the right uh, choice. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's, uh, oh, it's social media, people. You understand? It is. It's that. It's the scrolling. It's the thing they're doing when they're sitting there and just going like that. And you can see them doing it. And they don't look up. And they don't have any uh, you know, real-world communication. And they don't watch the news. And they, they say that they're... Um, uh, uh, they're, cu- they're cord cutters. <laughs> they're cord cutters. And, and they don't watch ABC or NBC or CBS. And you'll never see them reading, an, an, you'll never see them reading anything. You'll never see them reading a, a newspaper ever. Ever. 
Their entire worldview is provided to them by an algorithm. An algorithm is choosing what they see. I have a hard time getting as mad at Nick as I should be getting because I really feel like he's saying what many, many American men would like to say. They just don't have his platform. Right, and that's why 18 or 29-year-old men voted for Donald Trump. They are misogynists. They are, a lot of them are incels or are forced to be incels because women don't want to have anything to do with people that disrespect them from the very outset of the conversation. You know, it's so interesting. I, I was reading a lot of stories of, you know, uh, this 4B movement. I guess it translates into, uh, you know, uh, Korean uh, with 4Bs. But there's a 4B movement that started in South Korea among the women there, uh, the girls there, uh, they stopped having uh, relations, uh, you know, the sexual kind, with uh, the men there because the men there had social media videos that they were posting of women uh, having sex, of women in the bathroom, and the women didn't know that there was a camera there and that guys were filming them in the bathroom. And so uh, there was a lot of revenge porn going on in South Korea. This is what's online, Okay. Um, and so they uh, decided that they weren't going to have, uh, you know, sex with men anymore. They didn't want to have anything to do with them. They weren't going to marry them. They weren't going to have sex with them. They weren't going to uh, co commingle with them. They decided that, you know, they would have uh, friendships with each, o- each other. Women would turn to women to have conversations, to go to the movies, to have dinner. And, uh, you know, this started in 2018. It was their form of the Me Too movement over there. Well, now I'm reading here in the United States, a lot of young girls are like, well, screw it. We're not, we're, we're not, uh, we're not having anything to do with the men. They, they disrespect us. They're misogynists. They uh, think that, you know, uh, uh, marrying us when we're 16 is a good thing to be talking about. They think about taking us back to the Middle Ages is a good thing to be talking about. They think taking away our right to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, having pregnancy care. I mean, you know what you're talking about. You're talking about women who um, are pregnant, okay, uh, who can't. Pregnancy is one of the scariest times in a woman's health life, okay? It's, it's just it, everything that you think as a man is hard about pregnancy, it is. It is. Everything. Your body is completely challenged. Completely. And it's a scary time in women's health lives. And now you're saying if something goes wrong, die or bleed out in a bathroom or wait until, uh, you know, there's no blood pressure. Wait till there's no heartbeat uh, for the woman uh, before you actually uh, bring the crash cart in and, and, and do something for them. Women are like, screw you. And wait, it's just beginning. It's just beginning. And let me tell you how long it's going to last. You won't like this. You won't like this. But I kept telling you, you wouldn't like it if he won. You wouldn't like it. So now, he is going to have to replace some of the older Supreme Court justices. People are worried about Sonia Sotomayor, okay? They're worried about her seat because uh, she's not in the best of health. Uh, But they're also uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, uh, Clarence Uncle Thomas, right? And they're saying, uh, you know, he's old. He's got... So guess what Donald Trump does? He picks somebody just like him or worse who's 40. An Aileen Cannon, okay, somebody like that, to be the Attorney General of the United States, or Ken Paxton from Texas, okay? Oh, no, you, remember I said that. Remember I said Ken Paxton will be the Attorney General of the United States. Aileen Cannon just might be elevated to the Supreme Court. He's going to pick Younger versions of Alito, younger versions of Kavanaugh, younger versions of of Clarence, uh, you know, uh, uh, Uncle Thomas. He's going to just pick younger versions of them, more more extreme versions of them. Uh, that what's that guy in? Uh, um, oh man, Kazowitz, I think his name is the one that started this whole uh, Dobbs case. You know, the one that that and, and contraception is next, gay marriage is next, all of these things. They're all going to be reversed, all of them. Everything that we've come to know, everything that we've taken for granted as free citizens, as Americans, it's all about to come crashing down. And I'm telling you how uh, that's the court, okay? That's the court, and the court will take away birth control. The court will take away, oh, forget Plan B and Mifepristone. Oh, that's it. What was his name from, uh, uh, they keep 
you know, judge shopping for for uh, judges who will elevate the case. And they went to this guy. I think he's the eleventh uh, in Texas. Kazowitz, I think his name is. Anyway, so th- that that case is going to make its way up to the Supreme Court. Kazmarek, that's it. Thank you, Sean. Matthew Kazmarek. Uh, and and they they will find a people. And then all the federal judges, all of them, Trump people now. Every every single court is going to be full of people that are anti-woman, that want to roll back, uh, you know, uh, a redlining uh, protections. That seriously, and you know how I know? You know how I know? The day after the election, you know, you know what was going on in this country. You have any idea? So <laughs> this is so sick. All over this country, from Omaha, Nebraska to New York City. Swear to God. Young African American, middle schoolers, high schoolers, some were, uh, you know, uh, full grown adults, were getting the same text messages saying that a bus is going to come pick you up in the morning. You're part of Group C, and you will be taken to a plantation to pick cotton. I'm serious. This went on all over the country yesterday all over the country. Now, the first I heard about it was in New York, and I thought, New York. And then I heard about it in Omaha. I was like, Nebraska? Then I heard about it all over this country, like in every single place where a person was a, a, a person of color. And a lot of the people were sitting there going, how do they know? How, like, who's collecting the data? Just social media! It's social media. Everybody's sitting there going, how do they know that we're black? How do they have all this information about us? How do they know our phone numbers? Because you're giving your information to data brokers. You're actually providing them when you sign up. Uh, you got a phone number, right? And then you got an algorithm that actually watches you for a few minutes. Some of you have Alexa. She listens to you. And I know this because when my music app is open, when it's Amazon Music is open, which is every Friday night, and I'm sitting there having conversations with my friends or with Howard or whatever about, uh, where'd you get that uh, bathing suit? Or does it have an underwire? All of a sudden, I'm getting like a a, a ton of advertising for underwire bras. Or I'm getting a ton of advertising for the miracle suit because it cuts you a waste. It makes a waste. And you don't have one. I heard you say that. We're giving all this information about ourselves. And then people are saying, how are they targeting me? Well, I have news for you. It's exactly what IBM did for Adolf, okay? Everybody wonders, how did they know where the Jews lived? How did they know? It was big data. It was IBM. Actually, back in the day, it was IBM. They knew where every single person lived. They knew what religion they were. You were filling out forms and putting it down on the freaking forms. And IBM was the very first to process data. It was called data processing. Boy. Right. Now they don't even have to pro. Now all of a sudden you, you, you've got an algorithm. Artificial intelligence is processing it and it's for sale. For sale. <laughs> The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. That's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Reports of racist text messages across the country are hitting home right here in the metro. We want to warn you, we will be showing you these disturbing texts. Our Taylor Johnson spoke with someone who received these polarizing messages. Well, Aaron, just within the last 20 minutes, I received this oh same text message that you see here on the screen for context. Earlier this afternoon, I sent a text message to one of the numbers to try to see if it actually worked. And at 9.39 p.m., they sent a response to me looking exactly like this. Now, these text messages, like the one you see and the one that I received, were sent out the day after the election. And they're reportedly sent to black people and feature a similar theme, slavery. Mm. I read it, and then I just, I was in shock. 
I froze. I didn't know what to do. On Wednesday night, a text message from a random number left 19-year-old Atoch Aquin scared and on edge. The text read, greetings, you have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Oh my God. It then gives a date and time for a pickup by executive slaves as well as a group letter. I thought I was reading the message wrong, so I kept on reading it and reading it and reading it. Some of the text messages seeming to target black people across the country are reported to be personalized. A Quinn's was not. My coworker, after she saw the message, she put the number on Cash App and we tried to see who, who could the number belong to, which it didn't show. We tried to call the number. The number did not go through. Douglas Wesselman says his granddaughter, who was also 19 received a similar text. My granddaughter, I should say, is uh, Asian and black uh, of mixed race and very proud young lady, but it was quite upset by that. Six News called and texted each of the numbers, but received no response. The source still a mystery. How did they get all the information to be only black? students and black people for them to get that message. So there should not be a way that they can be able to do that. But what's not mysterious to Wesselman, the existence of racism. But it makes me sad and it makes me angry. And, you know, we could be so much better than this. We really could, but, you know, the billionaires don't want it to be better. They don't want us to uh, orient ourselves into what could be a freaking fabulous place to live again. Uh, and, you know, we are going back. I just want you to know we are going back and we're going way back. We're going way, way back. Can you believe that? So it's interesting because the Russian money that came into this election that we know of, at least you could read about it in an indictment from September, was about $10 million. And that $10 million was given to a company in Tennessee, of all places. And then that company in Tennessee doled it out to... Uh, some of the influencers uh, that you, uh, you know, Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, others like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, during the election, we get these uh, fantastical bomb threats that were not credible, but they were bomb threats that were coming from Russian emails. And then the next day, black only students, young, were targeted with slavery messages. And Donald Trump is sitting there promising bloody mass deportations. And today, I'm sitting there listening to Latinos try to explain why they voted for him, and they go, he's only going to deport the bad people. He's only going to deport the bad... Are you insane? Are you insane? One of the people that were interviewed uh, said she lived in a, uh, a house where her and her husband uh, were legal, but other people, other members of her household were not legal, but they hadn't broken the law, so they would never be swept up in this mass deportation frenzy. I'm sorry, but did you not get the message that crossing the border illegally is a crime, according to the Trump administration? How so now all of a sudden, 2 o'clock in the morning, the local sheriff, the police, he's going to give them all immunity, as you know, uh, and they are going to launch this, uh, you know, mass deportation effort. If they're smart, they will go after known criminals. Okay, first, first, it will not be the end. Uh, and they'll start deporting, uh, you know, people like this so that everyone can get behind it. Everyone could say, see, that's what he said. He, that, uh, and then, you know, they'll come for you. Okay, then we'll come, they'll, they'll come for people who they also have decided broke the law because they're here without papers, so that's illegal, right? And so they'll have to deport them too. They are very busy, uh, you know, building camps. They are. And um, if they were only going after criminals and uh, people who uh, have committed crimes, they wouldn't need camps. They would need jail cells, which already exist, see? So they wouldn't need camps. Uh, so you know that they're coming after a lot of people, a lot. And in fact, uh, this guy is a former ICE official in the Trump administration. I think the way you got to view this is it's going to be a full assault on the current immigration enforcement system. Under the current legal framework, with the current resources that are allocated to ICE, he can get nowhere near the kind of numbers he's been talking about, you know, a million deportations in a year. I think just to put this in perspective, during the the biggest years of the Trump administration, ICE deported 267,000 
you know, individuals from the United States. So you got to quadruple that. So how do you do that? Well, one is you need more ICE officers. You need to increase the number of arrests. Two is with this administration, they're going to want to build mass detention camps to, camps. to house those individuals before uh -huh. they're deported. But most importantly is the immigration courts. And you and I have talked about this for a long time. Huge backlogs have formed. The Supreme Court has said that migrants before they're deported are entitled to due process. So how do you get them through the courts? And I think what the administration's thinking is, how do we bypass those courts, right? Yes. Not supplement them, not surge resources to them, but how do we eliminate that right to the courts in the first place? Right. How do we defy the Constitution? How do we say that the Constitution doesn't apply to every single person in the United States? Because we're a civilized nation, and so each and every person in the United States, whether they're a foreigner, whether they're legal, whether they're visiting, whatever, gets due process in this country because they're in this country. And they want to get rid of that. And, you know, I already saw, like, asshats on Twitter saying, uh, you know, these people have no rights. They're not citizens. The Constitution doesn't apply to them. Oh, yes, it does, you moron. That's what makes us great. Yes, it does, but it won't. It won't. It will not apply. There will be no courts for them. There will be no due process. Remember those heartbreaking stories we heard of the little girls sitting on the witness stand? Their feet didn't even touch the floor. And they were saying, where's my mommy? This is what he's going to avoid. He doesn't want that. He just wants to put that little girl in a camp and have no one the wiser. Have no one know about her. And you know what's going to happen? I'll tell you, ProPublica is going to do some sort of a, uh, an interview with people in the camps. And we're going to find out a whole lot of, uh, you know, weird stuff's going on with the guards and the little girls. And everybody's going to be outraged. But, you know, if you protest, National Guard, here you go. We're in a spiral of, of hurt right now. The world is not going to look the same a year from now. It just isn't. Your, your world isn't going to look the same. Uh, and obviously, the amount of money that is going to go towards making you feel good about it, that's going to make you feel, that, that's going to try to make you feel good about no due process in this country, that's going to make you feel like every single person in that camp, including that three year old girl, is a criminal. Every single one of them is a criminal. They deserve it. They deserve it. And, uh, you know, people will consistently and constantly be giving their data <laughs> to people that will use it against you. They can track. I mean, obviously they can track. You know, and you know what's amazing to me about all this? Back in the day, the Republicans used to call my show... When they, they first put, like, magnetized strips on the backs of licenses, forget the chips. We didn't even have chips yet, but they had strips where you could swipe on the back of your driver's license or on the back of your credit card. They said they're going to track you. They're going to track you. And I tried to tell them they're already tracking you. They're tracking you on your phone. What is your issue? What is your problem? <laughs> it's the Illuminati. It's the Illuminati. Well, it turns out it's Elon Musk. It's Peter Thiel. That's, that's who the Illuminati is. There is no deep state. There's a bunch of millionaires. Billionaires, actually. And they're going to steal everything. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes. Launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. All right, 20 after. Nick in New York. Hi. Freaky Friday greetings, Randy. Hi, fight or flight. Which one are you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm actually on my way to Canada right now. So are you? <laughs> I'm uh, heading through Brett. Yep, I'm heading through Brett's hometown, heading up. But uh, you know, I'll I'll be back. But um, really, it does feel like you're in exile in your own country, you know. And it, this is what queer people have felt our whole lives, and just what black people native americans know you know it's the and the other side refuses to understand and make right you know um i wanted to call about just this weird experience i had um going into the classroom with my gen z students the day after and you know i came with cookies and chocolate ready to say you know let's talk and just how are you feeling they had the blankest kind of just unfazed expressions. It was so unnerving because, you know, they were not, these aren't Trump voters, I, I'm pretty sure, but they just didn't really seem to care. I mean, I think they do, but it's like, 
blank spaces. How do you feel? Anybody? Like Mueller, Mueller, you know? And so I just really think there's something happening with the, you know, the, the connection to information with the new generation and my generation as millennials, you know, people who grew up in the 20th century before the internet, you know, we all, we thought that things were getting more progressive as, as time went on. And I just think something's, something is off, you know, and I think it has to do with what you're saying about this, this social media yeah. brainwashing and siloing that's happening. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt you know? about it. And, I think uh, I think the look on their yeah. faces that you saw was shock. You know, they can't process what right. happened. You know, we're all exactly. uh, here mm-hmm. at the at, at my show. We're all trying to process what happened. We're all trying to figure out fight or flight. Right. We're we're all trying to figure out. You know, do we want to do this for four more years? And you know, intellectually, I understand yeah. that exhausting people is part of the mo. Exhausting people is a tactic. It's a tool. Uh, and I know that you know uh, a lot of journalists not only feel threatened and scared, but they're also exhausted. They're tired, and they're like, uh, you know, where's the next generation that we hand off to? There isn't one. There isn't one because they failed to educate themselves about the American system of government. And the ones that talk about the American system of government are talking about foreign government and how they want that here. Foreign, you know, uh, uh, autocracy and how they want that here. And Viktor Orban. Tucker Carlson is like constantly, you know, going to Viktor Orban, going to Hungary to, to, to figure out how, you know, America should look and how you bring in a quasi, uh, uh, you know, strong man. How you, you know, make it into like a quasi fascist, uh, you know, dictatorship without going all the way like you do it incrementally. And then you have the other guys that are sitting there, you know, filling these kids' heads up with, you'll never own a home. You'll never get ahead. You'll never this. You'll never, your country hates you. Your country has no place for you. Right? I, I, I mean, it's such, a, it's such an assault. And so a lot of people just I, voted their feelings. Instead or didn't of, vote at all, which is, you know, Or didn't ridiculous. vote at all. That's right. 20 million, they're telling yeah. us. 20 million. And I'm just so, I'm so thankful you know, I came of age listening to you during the Bush years, and, you know, you just made it clear you have to read the paper, have access to information. And I tell my students, get your free subscription to the paper that you have access to. And I, you know, make sure that they, they do that. And um, so, yeah, I'm just so thankful for you and your show again. And, uh, you know, I think if you like my fun aunt and uh, brother David, my, my gunkle, you know, so uh. I just think we get we have to keep keep our, you know, little connections and our information circles and our our joy and our humor and just uh you know we're going to get through this together so thank you so much randy drive safe and you know what the first question they're going to ask you when you cross the border into canada is right (laughs) are you yeah what what the f is wrong with you people Oh no! Yeah, you better have an I answer. Know. You oh better my have gosh. An answer. Hey Nick, if you're actually going through my hometown, uh, if you're going through my hometown, keep going. Don't keep stop going. for gas. Yeah, don't stop don't. to get a bite to eat. <laughs> keep on rolling, yep. brother. Yeah, plow on through, dude. Just keep on going, brother David. You got a fan out there? Did you hear that? I, I did hear it, and, and yes, <laughs> dude, we got to keep the connections. Uh-huh. Well, sister, it is here at last. You always said you'd tell us, and it is indeed fight or flight, and yeah. it gives me no joy to say that. Yeah. Um. The, I have gone through all but acceptance in the Elizabeth Kubler Ross. Uh, oh, the grave, the the stages, stages of grief. Of grief. In, yeah. in seventy-two hours, acceptance is is coming. But lesson sixteen: learn from peers in other countries. Ah. Keep up your friendships abroad, or make new friends in other countries. The present <laughs> difficulties in the United States are an element of a larger trend, and no country is going to find a solution by itself. Make Sure, you and your family have passports. Yeah, the memorization project is back on because it was put on hold during the campaign. So my new best um, friend is a guy named Mark Miller. Who's Mark Miller? Uh, he's in charge of uh, Canadian immigration. He's my new best okay. friend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. Yeah. And Mark Miller, I, I hear you. I am a priori at making sure the passport is valid. Uh-huh. And probably going to be retrenching to California because it's easier to get to Mexico from California than it is from Kansas. <laughs> um, that said, I have to tell you, Wednesday's show was one for the ages oh, yeah. for the show. Uh-huh. Um, and you nailed it. The whole social media uh, And now propaganda. everybody's like, oh, 
I didn't even think of that. Well, good. You know, now think and of you it. You and I spoke about this when I was still in Michigan, about the two worlds and the siloing of information. Yes. And they're going that direction. Yes. Underneath that, of course, the thing that one third of this country that bothered to vote, half of them, obviously went for white supremacy yes. and machismo and misogyny. And it is 1980 and, and you know, you coming know, full circle. You know what? You know what was a complete and utter failure of imagination. They yes. think they still think at this point that they're not going to come for them. They're just going to come <laughs> for for these people. They're not going to come for those people. They're not going to come for my people. They're not. They're insane. I mean, they're they're literally insane. They, you know, this country is going to look nothing like this country by the time they're done with it. No, and there is this other disturbing trend of the. Uh, Whoa, what they're people are rejecting the incumbent it, it they're they're looking at a new possible conservative prime minister in canada france is going to have another election and this time marine le pen may get in <gasps> because people blame the incumbent always uh, so, always yeah so you know what it's so interesting there was a report today and i, I saw it it's kind of you know dry stuff but if you're interested in in what went on around the world Every yeah. incumbent who was, uh, you know, in charge during uh, uh, the post-COVID era that all faced inflation because, you know, inflation was a global thing. It was all exactly. it was every single country. We, As the forthcoming recession will be global. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, every incumbent uh, was voted out. Every single one, no matter what party they were from in Belgium, in, in the. Now, we did better than most people. Uh, we were only uh, voted out our incumbent by seven points or some such thing. But uh, other people like Belgium, 36 <laughs> percent rejected the person that guided them through. Uh, the, the broken supply chains, yeah, and and rebuilt them. So yeah, I mean it's it's and social media is not a friend globally. Okay, it just no. isn't, just isn't. So you know, like prepare yourself. He's right. Get get yourself a um a passport for God's sakes. Just do it now. Um, I was looking at the uh, article. You know what the the title on the Drudge Report today is in big giant red letters. Exit! Like an exit sign. Connect. To speak to Randy. Call 561 270 3844. 561 270 3844. You get one more election where white people can make the decision. Oh. The white people got to make the right decision, and then Trump's got to get in there and never leave. That, to me, at this point, is a pathway. It's time to shut up. Elect Trump one more time, and then stop having elections. We have got to talk about the fundamentals of our worldview and what it would look like to build a society based on our distinct worldview. It looks like a society where women don't have the right to vote. And it looks like a society where boys and girls get married as teenagers and start having kids and they don't use birth control and they don't use contraceptives and they have big families and a high birth rate and it looks like women wearing veils at church and it looks like women not being in the workforce banning gay marriage is back on the menu banning sodomy is back on the menu banning contraceptives is back on the menu and basically we're having something like taliban rule in America, in a good way. A We're good having way. something like a Catholic Taliban rule in America. Yeah, that 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 is, uh, you know, how they say when I say we're not, you know, when, when Kamala Harris was telling you we're not going back. She was talking about that. She was talking about that kind of, uh, you know, worldview. I don't know when that became an expression. My worldview. Uh, I think it happened during the Bush years, you know, my worldview. Uh, screw you. You have no world view. Your world is your freaking phone. You have no view of the world. You've never set foot outside of your state. You have no idea what this world looks like, how it functions, what systems of government are uh, good systems and what systems of government aren't good. Oh, my world view. This is truly, uh, though, the thing. This is really it. This is the Opus Dei Catholic view of America, uh, and we are going back to it. We are going back. Donald Trump is going to be able to pick more Supreme Court justices to replace uh, those that are retiring, that are younger, and will be in place 
for the duration of my life, for the duration of your life, your children's lives, and maybe even their children's lives because they will be 40 years old and they will sit on the court for a lifetime, which will be another 40 years. We are in so much trouble. You have no earthly idea. Uh, I'm, I just want to see who the Secretary of Defense is, and then I'll be able to tell you just how violent it might get. And you know the Insurrection Act is coming. You know it is. I anybody that protests anything now, anybody that goes out on the, I, they have absolutely no stomach for real world opinions, for real world views, for real world protests, for organized people. They have no, 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 uh, you know, th th they're just going to shoot into the crowd now. You remember he wanted to shoot into the crowd then, then. And you had a secretary of defense, you had a joint chiefs that said, I'm sorry, this is America. You cannot do that. That's gone. We're the guardrails, just us. And you're gonna have to ask yourself, you know, am I willing to die? Am I willing to, uh, you know, be shot at? Am I willing to take a risk like that? You know, am I willing to, uh, you know, be beaten? Am I willing to have dogs sicked on me? Am I willing to see fire hoses pointed at me? You know, he's already described to you his uh, dystopian world, and in his head, it's uh, full of blood. He, he said it. There's going to be bloody deportations, not just mass deportations, but bloody ones, okay? Bloody ones. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. You would never abuse no. power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, and what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together. We will secure that border on day one. I always say, you know, they say, what are the first things you're going to do? I always say, number one, we're closing our border. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. Oh, what I want to do and what I will do is you graduate from a college, I think you should get automatically, as part of your diploma, a green card. Somebody graduates at the top of the class, they can't even make a deal with the company because they don't think they're going to be able to stay in the country. That is going to end on day one. I'm going to terminate these Green New Deal atrocities on day one. And I will end the electric vehicle mandate on day one. And we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to start that day one. We got immunity at the Supreme Court. Uh, it's so easy. I would fire him within two seconds. The moment we win, we will rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner unjustly victimized by the Harris regime, and I will sign their pardons on day one. I will sign it on day one. Hey, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't the worst I've ever seen uh, of him. That wasn't uh, the worst of it at all. I don't even know why, uh, you know, that was a mashup that the recount made, but okay. Uh, so let me tell you what happened today. So today, uh, Donald Trump was on the phone with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, right? And he said to, to Zelensky, hold on, somebody wants to talk to you, and he put Elon Musk on the phone. So for anybody who thinks that uh, Elon Musk isn't the president of the United States, Elon Musk is the president of the United States. Now, I don't know what he's talking about with the electric car thing. Uh, you know, maybe Elon Musk is done making cars and now he wants to, uh, you know, I don't know, develop uh, artificial intelligence and uh, be in your head, be in your brain, you know, uh, actually get in there with chips and do that. I don't know. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, he, 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 <laughs> he, he's, 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 he's all bets are off. Okay, he's, he's going to end up with well, he's got the courts now. I mean, there's just no question. And then all the federal courts will just be just tons of people, okay? Tons of new conservative Catholic judges. All of them. All of them. Every one of them will be of that mind. No contraception. No gay marriage. No sodomy. I mean, sodomy, they will, they will go back there. Um, no birth control. Nothing uh, to do with Mifepristone or Plan B or any of the things post-haste, you know, that, uh, oh, my God. None of that. Absolutely none of that. That will all go away. Um, they'll only come for the bad people. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Uh, and they will put them in camps. 
Mm -hmm. And the Insurrection Act, if anybody protests, is definitely, uh, you know, in the playbook. It's definitely, definitely, definitely in the playbook. Elon Musk is the president, and Peter Thiel is the vice president, and you should know that. You should know that. So I honestly don't know exactly, uh, you know, whether you want to stay or go. Like I said, it's it's fight or flight Friday. Everybody has to make that decision. You know, when you when you sit there and you say, when, what, what, <laughs> will you tell us when it's time to flee? Yes, I will. <laughs> it's time to now decide if you have it in you to fight or if you're ready to flee if you're exhausted if you've had enough because this is going to go on a really long time clear four this is the randy Rhodes show to speak with randy dial 561-270-3844 that's 561-270-3844 oh my god all right uh rhonda and erie Okay. Are you all right? I'm going to talk. uh, mm -mm, (laughs) No. no, I'm going to talk slowly so that I don't curse on your airwaves, okay? Okay. All right. So first question. Um, What is wrong with white people? (laughs) White white people are um, scared of of everything. (laughs) And that's got to be it. I... So um, the the thing that prompted me to call you was to um, was what you said about uh, about uh, media and media consolidation and and that being you know a really easy way to be disinformation to people. But I'll go you one further. I think that you know for decades we have been watching the decimation of um, quality public education in this country. And um, and with every successive year since Reagan started this mess, uh, I have seen a decrease in critical thinking skills that ramped up in mm, probably the mid 90s. The mid 90s is when we really started seeing um, concerted efforts uh, again. Um, public education, you know, I don't want my property taxes going to somebody else's kid and right. that kind of ridiculous, you know, quote unquote, individualist uh, argument. So so I think that coupled with the fact that we have media consolidation and this ridiculous, unregulated, um, you know, system of social media where it's just the Wild West. You can do anything. I shouldn't even say the Wild West because even that had some rules. Yeah. Um, you know, where you could just do anything, say anything, act any kind of way, break all behavioral and public norms, right? And 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 I think that those two, there are other factors, but I think those are the two major factors that colluded for this because the idea that Latino people voted for this man in the numbers that they did is just astounding to me. That man told you, not only did he tell you what he was going to do this time, we saw it. They had your babies Mm -hmm. in cages. And they separated moms and, I mean, it was like a scene out of Sophie's Choice, you know? I mean, it was. I know, I know. And all this that you're talking about, all of this that's going on with the social, they're doing it all while collecting data, all while listening to you, all while knowing what it is you're afraid of, and then playing Mm -hmm. to your fears. Mm -hmm. Hence, what is the problem Mm -hmm. with white people? They've been told Mm -hmm. to be very afraid, be afraid of black people, be afraid of Latinos, be afraid of crime, be afraid of somebody's getting something that you're not getting. Mm -hmm. Be afraid, Mm -hmm. be afraid of the great replacement, be afraid of the browning of America, Mm -hmm. be afraid. Mm -hmm. That's what's Mm -hmm. wrong. That's Mm -hmm. what's wrong, Rhonda. All the while, all the while, not doing the work to make things better, right? right? You want things to be better, but you don't want to do the work to do it, you know? Because because it it just has to be better 
for you. There is no more yeah. out of many one. There is no more yeah. community. It's just you. Mm-hmm. It's you mm-hmm. and in your pajamas online. It's you with your phone. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what you do work for. You don't think mm-hmm. about the, the community you're, you're, you're toiling in. You don't think about others. You only think about you. You only, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you're afraid you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not thin enough. You're not white enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. I, it, it's an amazing thing. And, you know, it's even starting in minority communities uh, with uh, Mexicans, mm-hmm. right? You're not, you're, you're not mm-hmm. white enough. You need to be whiter. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, uh, what's her face, uh, you know, and, and Kanye West. White, white people matter. I mean, I couldn't believe he, he literally walked down a, a catwalk wearing white lives matter. Mm-hmm. Holy mm-hmm. crap, man. Mm-hmm. This, 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 the ways in which white supremacy yes. <laughs> um, is such an insidious tool for everything. I mean, it is, it is the most effective um, tool of social control ever to be invented because it doesn't just sit with people who identify with white. It, uh, it sits with Everyone, right, yeah. as the standard, as the unachievable standard. Yes. And so, <laughs> and so, I think that what what I what I want to what I really want to say to people is that I want to echo a lot of what you've been saying because I don't think that people understand. You know, I've, I've heard people say, "Well, in four years, no, baby, no, 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 my sweet summer child, there's not going to be four years of this." Right. This is a like we are not going to see if there is a change. We are not going to see it before I die. Right. Right. I feel like that. We're too. not. I feel the mm-hmm. same the- damn way. And I don't you know, I, I don't know what to do about it at this point. You know, I mean, wh- what, what, what do we do? It, it, plan. We plan. Listen, this is what this is what we have to do. So all of you who are listening to me, I want you to read up on two types of communities. I want you to look at kibitzes, kibitzes, I think I'm mispronouncing the word. I want you to look at uh, at the ways in which Jewish communities oh. organize themselves. Kibitzes. And kibitzes, thank you, that's the word. And and then and then and then I want you to look at the ways in which black people during um um open facing Jim Crow organize themselves. Yes, right? I, you know, it's, um, that's so it's so unbelievable that you, that you picked that particular because that's what I was looking at last night. I was looking at mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, the Pettus Bridge, I was looking at the, mm-hmm. the lunch counters, I was looking at mm-hmm. how people were wearing their Sunday best, how uh, mm-hmm. right. And I was looking at all of the resistance that went on in the, the Jim Crow mm-hmm. South and thinking That's really the only choice we have is to be our very, very best version of ourselves and to show other people that we are not worthy of their hatred. We're not worthy of their disdain. We're not worthy of being separated out that without us, you have nothing. You have no culture. You you have no future. You have no compassion. You're just empty shells. Uh, And Elon is going to put a chip in your head. And, uh, you know, you'll be connected to the matrix. And that's all there is for you. Well, and, and I, I, I don't even, don't even go that far. I, I think that the, that the development of intentional communities like that is not about the people who are external to it. I think they're about the people who are internal to it. You need a place to go when they deny you entry to a grocery store. You need to be able to go to a grocery store where people are going to treat you equitably and with respect. You need to be able to, um, uh, you need to have a bar in your neighborhood that you can go to without fear um, or without heightened fear of police coming in to raid it all the time. You need to be able to buy clothes in a place where they're not price gouging you, where you're, they're not going to follow you around all day. You need childcare in which you know people are going to be able, are going to take care of your child and treat them with respect. Et cetera, et cetera. You need to be able to get medical and dental and veterinary care. You, this is what I'm talking about, because this is going to go on 
for the better part of a generation, we have no equitable functioning government now. It is a corrupt system. Yeah. And we have to fight against that, yes. But in order to do that, we have to organize back into intentional communities, those of us who are smart enough to do so, and we have to take care of one another first. Yeah. Then, because that's the way, that's your platform, your foundation for fighting tyranny. But do understand that everything that you said is exactly what is going to happen. We know that it, it has happened before, not just in this country, but in other countries as well. Heed her warning, y'all. She's telling you the truth. And then listen to what I am saying and build your communities now. It's really smart. Really, really smart, Rhonda. Thank you. I love you, girl. I love you, and too. And you be you know safe. That. You, too. You, too. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. She's brilliant for a reason, okay? Uh, she's my sister from another mister, okay? Obviously, she is a uh, very highly educated black woman, and I'm a low-educated white woman, and we both get it. So find somebody in that conversation to identify with, her or me, and just know we are telling you the truth. We're just a corrupt... He's been telling you we're a third-world country. Now they go about making us one because they need to steal... All of it.